Well, guys, happy Resurrection Sunday. If you're willing and able, stand with me, okay? We're going to get right into worship this morning and celebrate the King. He is the reason for the season. I'm going to read out of Matthew chapter 28. Starting in verse 5, it says this. It says, the angels said to the woman, do not be afraid. Can we say that together? Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Can we say that? He is risen. Just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. Can we turn to someone and say, he is risen? <laughs> Come on. So good. Come on. Isn't it good to be in a house of God that's alive? <laughs> Isn't that a blessing? Such a blessing. Well, listen, it's very likely that every one of you here this morning has something in your life that may be dead. 
you could be dead in your own sin. You could, you could have be dead in your own faith. Your hope could feel dead. There could be something in your life that's dead, but I can promise you this, that Yahweh is a God of resurrection. Amen? He always has been. He always will be. So this morning and this Sunday, my, my exhortation for us is that we will look some dead things in the face and just say, God, I know you're the God who resurrects the dead. You take dead things and you bring them to life. So as we worship, why don't we just sing a little louder, especially when we get to the, the choruses of Christ being raised from the dead, just in faith that he will do the same thing for every one of you. As you just declare who he is, he will take dead things and bring them to life. So Lord, we just thank you this morning for the privilege of coming together to celebrate you and worship you. And we will declare that for the rest of our days, that you are a God who raises dead things to life. You are a God who brings resurrection power who has the ability to quicken the mortal body with the resurrection life. You are a God who delivers people from the grips of sin. That we are no longer slaves of sin, but slaves of righteousness. Lord, we just worship you. We praise you. Be honored and glorified in this church building, but most of all, in this church body. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you for resurrection life. Let's sing that, we thank you. We thank you for resurrection life. We thank you, we thank you for resurrection
love and held its breath Till that storm was rolled for good And the lamb conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born And then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of all It shall not be, it shall not fail By His blood and in His name And in His freedom I am free For the love of Jesus Christ Who has resurrected me Praise the Father Praise the Son Praise the Spirit Three in one God of glory Majesty Praise forever to the King of kings Praise the Father Praise the Son Praise the Spirit Three in one God of glory Majesty Praise forever to the King of kings In the morning that you rose All of heaven held its breath Till that storm was rolled for good For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born And then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of all It shall not kneel, it shall not fail By His blood and in His name And in His freedom I Praise you, we praise you, Lamb.
celebrate your life. We celebrate your life. We celebrate your life and what you did for us. We celebrate your life. We celebrate your life and we celebrate your life and what you did for us. And we celebrate your life and we celebrate your life and we celebrate
Give life and life abundantly. Thank you for the new life we have in you. The new life we have in you. You came to give life and life abundantly. You came to give life and life.
we thank you that we get to stand here today, Lord, washed by your blood. Lord, cleansed, standing in full righteousness before you, God. We thank you for resurrection life this morning, God. We thank you that you have awakened us in our spirits, Father. We ask, Father, that to this, uh, this morning, God, that you just release your splendor, your glory. Lord, that we would see you, we would continue to see you for who you are. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done. Lord, we're so grateful. We ask, Father, that you come in power today. That, Holy Spirit, you would reveal yourself in your fullness. Lord, we continue to lift you up in all your splendor and all your glory. Lord, we thank you for the gift of resurrection life that causes us to be born again, that causes us to walk in the newness of life. And Holy Spirit, we thank you. Help us to celebrate in fullness, Lord, by the Spirit of God all that you've done, all that you're continuing to do, Lord, and reviving us from our dead state. <laughs> Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. We ask that our eyes would be fixed on you this morning and throughout the day, Lord, as we remember all that you've done. Ah, the precious gift that you've given to us. In Holy Spirit, we come with all gratitude. You are worthy. You are the only one, the precious Lamb of God. Yeah, slain with the foundations of the earth. We ask, Lord, that you continue to open our eyes that we would see you rightly. And we love and we honor you today. We thank you for your majestic glory in this room right now. Lord, change us. Transform us. Lord, we thank you that we are being transformed from glory to glory, and some, from faith to faith, into your image looking more like you yeah so we thank you that we get to encounter you once again today we thank you that we encounter you in the worship and through the word and through every bit of of sacrifice that we give unto you God we love you and we adore you we bless you in Jesus name Bless someone next to you. Just greet someone. Encourage them. God's good. everyone lots of new faces we just welcome everyone it's good to see you here we greet you um, my name is Miles Millam my wife Lisa and I we get the the privilege of of pastoring and getting to partner with the Lord and what he's doing right here in Kingston and in New England and so we just we just welcome everyone um, my only regret is that I cover the cross we need this thing bigger <laughs> yeah amen um, I'm just going to receive an offering, okay? And 
um, we just consider this just an act of worship. And I'm just thankful for what the Lord is doing in this place and his provision. And so we're just going to give people an opportunity to give. There's ways to give online. Um, there should be envelopes in the, in the seat in front of you. If you need one, just raise your hand. And I'm just going to pray. I'm just super thankful for all that the Lord is doing in and through the person of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we just thank you that we get the uh, opportunity to give. Lord, we thank you that it is yet another way um, we, get, we get to show honor and glory to your name. It's an act of worship on our behalf, Lord, so we give it, we sow it as a seed of faith uh, into the kingdom, asking that it would be multiplied, not only into the things that you do uh, through this ministry and through the people we support, God, but also it would be multiplied to those who give right now. Lord, we thank you for your love, and we thank you for compassion, and we thank you for all that you're doing. And Lord, we consider all your ways, God, in our lives. We thank you for all the amazing things you've done. Lord, we thank you for all the things that you're walking us through. And we just give you praise, glory, and honor for those things. And we, we ask, Father, that you just bless the offering, uh, baptize it <laughs> in oil, and we thank you that it's holy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. try this I'm feeling a little froggy in my throat so the problem with this on my on the side of my head is that if I got to clear my my throat you all hear it <laughs> usually with the microphone I can just do this but unfortunately the whole world's going to hear me clear my throat so all right just a couple announcements we have house we have a a prayer house of prayer here every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And um, we just want to give you just an invitation. If you're able to come, come be with us Wednesday nights at 7. It's awesome. We just worship, harp and bowl, pray. It's been an awesome time, and God does things through those times. And we just invite everyone out. Joseph's Storehouse, we have that every Wednesday from 3.30 uh, to 5.30. And um, God, we got to give away, how many, 14? Was it 14 this Easter? What was it? 14, right? Yeah, so that, that's, come on, we got to bless 14 families with, with Easter supplies and dinners. That's been awesome. And God's doing so many good things through that, and they got to pray with everybody that came through. Amen? Come on. And um, we do have a, um, on April 8th, uh, we want to invite everyone out with us, but we've been invited to Zeal to, to a worship. It's an all-day worship and prayer event um, ending on April 8th, right? And we're doing the final set at from 6 to 8 p.m. And so that will be epic. That is at Zeal Manchester. in Manchester. Sorry, guys. I'm thinking I got my notes here, so I know the information, but um, at Zeal in Manchester, and I don't know the address of that, but if you look them up online, you can find that, okay? It's, it's like a 12-hour burn or something crazy, but we'll, we'll put up more information on social media for that, amen? All right, well, I just want to share a few thoughts this morning, amen? And... Uh, I didn't give anyone, I didn't give uh, any scriptures this week, so we don't have our cheat sheets on the screen, so you'll just have to keep up with me. 
I've been good about that over the last five weeks, right? It's helped. But not today. It's too early. No, just teasing. Just teasing. Not really. Um, we just want to talk about Jesus. That's all we got to talk about here. Um, I'm going to just read a scripture out of John 19. This is just like giving us... We're going to go back to Good Friday for a minute, okay? And then we'll talk about resurrection, and I'm going to hit it from a different angle. But I want us to know it's so important that we understand what Jesus has done for us. The work that he did is complete on the cross. Let me get rid of this stuff. And in John 19, I'm just going to read this. Verse 28. It says, after this, Jesus, knowing all the things, all things were now accomplished, yeah, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. And now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine and put on hyssop and put it in his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And why I'm going to start here is because I am going to talk to you about uh, the tomb being a womb today. And uh, it's a statement that was made by Bob Sorge, but I'm going to go on a few other things that I feel like the Lord spoke to me on this. But this this is powerful, and we need to understand what Jesus has done for us. Amen? So in that, just in that, that word finished, I just want to talk about that for a minute to give us a, a headline as to what Jesus has done for you. It's super powerful, and this should actually set everyone in the room free. And if you don't know Jesus, today's your day. You get to know Jesus again. If you fell away from Jesus, you get to rededicate your life today. God wants to do something in you and really perform a work inside of you because he's got purpose for you. Amen? You weren't just put on the earth as an afterthought. You were put on this earth as a forethought. Like God is, as a child of God, and God wants to use you and continue to use you throughout your whole life. So finish, this word finish means literally debt, debts that have been paid in full. It has, this has like a triple meaning in one word. That means like a debt that has been fully paid, it's done, right? Literally, it means debts that have been fully paid. And it's also a judicial term that's actually inferring a a particular sentence has been fully um, served. See, so we had a debt that we couldn't pay, and only Christ could pay it because it was by his blood that he took care of everything, paid it in full, Got me out of jail. It's not like this is not, you know, salvation's not a get out of jail free card he, or a get out of hell free card, right? Salvation is there to cause us to walk in a life that's abundant and full, even though we will deal with trials and tribulations. Come on, a Christian life, it's not like, you, you know, this whole thing about this better life thing. Yes, he wants you to have an abundant life, but there are trials, there are things that you will go through, and God will, is going to help you get through those things. But this is, this is good news for us, right? It's, a, it's literally taking, taking care of all the debt that we owed. Come on, we like Jubilee, don't we? Like if everyone would just pay my tax debts every year, that'd be great. Come on. And then a judicial term saying, Any, anything that's been held against me, I'm free from. So all the wages of sin and death, I've been freed from. Everything that I've ever like, messed up in my life has been broken by the power of the blood of Jesus. This is the real deal, right? And so at the end of the day, it's a military term as well, right, that says this. It says, it declares that the battle's already been won. It's complete. It's finished with utter victory. So those three things 
combined, man, it's a connotation of bringing prophetic promises into fruition. Really, it, it also speaks of like the maturity of fruit. Like we were waiting for something to come to full maturity and it actually speaks of it in a prophetic manner, meaning something that God has promised will come to pass. And Jesus supplied all of that for you. This is really good news. I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged by that. And so I just have to give us, like historically we have to understand Christ died and was, he, literally they didn't find his body. After the tomb was open, they never found his body, never recovered, but some people found him, come on, alive and well. And why do, I, why do we know that this is truth? Because all those people that saw him alive, well, maybe not all of them, because we don't have documentation probably of everything that he did in those 50 days, which again, I'll say this, as I said Friday night, I want all the videotape, I want all the... I want all the the information on that to see what happened on the earth in those times. And you know what? I probably won't care because I'll be with him. So it, it just doesn't matter. But I'm curious now. So maybe he'll give me an internal revelation to that. You know what I'm saying? But the reality is this, that God came and he gave us this open door to step through. And it is the door of salvation. But it isn't just like I said. It's not our, it's not our fireproof thing, you know? Like God wants us, yes, he wants you to stay saved from hell. He doesn't want us going to, to, into eternal darkness forever. He wants us to walk in living light forevermore. And it's been avail made available to every man, every woman. And this is, this is the gospel for us. But it is true that every historical witness died and was actually martyred. So if he wasn't raised from the dead, why would they die for it? Hmm. That'll just give you something to think about for the rest of the day. Go read Fox's Book of Martyrs. That'll change your life. I'm going to go back and read it again. But John 16 and verse 21. I'm just going to hit some of these things. I'm going to talk about labor. And I'm not talking about labor menial labor. I'm talking about labor that happens when something's birthed. Because Jesus comes and gives us this. Well, let me go back. John 16, verse 21. John 16 and verse 21. And I actually want to read this in context. I really should. So, verse, so chapter 16 really gives us an, an really a good picture of like what Jesus was talking about when he was giving us the Holy Spirit. And really he died, we're going to see here, and rose again so that you could receive the Spirit of God. Right? As a guarantee first, but also to empower you to live. Yes. Amen? So I'll just start in verse 1. It said, these things I, I've spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. Okay, so what's he talking about? He's actually about to talk about the prediction of his death and his resurrection. Right? But he says these things. He said, they'll put you out of the synagogues. Yes, <clears throat> the time is coming that whoever kills you, you will think that they're doing a service. On it. They'll think that he offers God service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you that when the time comes that you may remember that I told you of them. He's going to say some things in a minute. And there's one statement that I'm going to focus on. It said, in these and these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. So Jesus is already in departure mode. Chapter 16, right? And he says, but now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. 
So he's been talking about his death. He's been just rehearsing he's going to the cross. Like there's, go, there's going to be something that's going down, guys, and get ready. And they're, they're in turmoil. They're sad, right? There's sorrow. Wouldn't you be? You got Jesus, the Messiah, with you, walking with you on the earth. And what, what could be better than that? And he's about to tell us. Right? He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Come on, the truth sets us free. It is to your advantage that I go away. This causes my mind to stumble all the time when I think of this. Because if I had Jesus with me in full on flesh, I would say, I don't need something else other than you. But he said he gave us something better, and that's this, which he's about to talk about. It's the help of the Holy Spirit. He said, and if I, go, if, I, if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. And of righteousness because I go to my Father and you'll see me no more. So it absolutely is the, the mode of righteousness. The way we walk in righteousness is by the Holy Spirit. The way we're convicted of sin is by the Holy Spirit. The way someone who doesn't even know Jesus is convicted of sin is by the Holy Spirit. Because it's the Father and the Spirit who draws all men unto him. Amen? And so it says, um, and I go to my Father because you'll see me no more. And of judgment, excuse me, because the ruler of this world is judged. Right? So it's by the Holy Spirit that we understand that God is releasing a judgment on the powers of darkness. The spirit of this age. And come on, I don't care what is being declared from the White House over Easter. You cannot shadow the resurrection. You cannot shadow what God is going to do in the earth. You cannot shadow those things. And so we still have to sit in this spot where... He says, I still have many things to say to you, but I, you cannot bear them now. However, the spirit of truth has come and he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he speaks, he will tell you the things to come. He will glorify me. And we just went in through four weeks of a lot of going back and forth through this scripture. And I'm telling you, God is bringing a, a revelation of the Holy Spirit into the earth in this time that we've never seen before, never seen before. And I believe that with all of my heart. And so I just want you to zone in on, on verse 21 in chapter 16 here. And, it's, and this, is, this is him speaking and giving a, a, a parallel to what his resurrection and his death looks like. Okay, A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrows because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. Come on, somebody. Now listen, I just want you to understand that there's contradictions and, and, and there's things that we don't understand in Scripture, right? But I think God gives us a pretty good thing to understand birthing and the new birth right here. Really, I believe that God wants to show us amazing things in his word. And we have to ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to grab hold of these things. So there are contractions that birth life. <laughs> so I'm talking as a man with no schooling other than being there as a witness. And all I know is this, is when contractions begin to happen, she doesn't care what I'm saying, what's happening, what's going on around me. She has her eyes fixed on one thing, getting the baby out. Yeah? Anyone in the room? I have a few ladies in the room that would give witness to that. Like, you just like, God is about to do something. And in the earth, and there are, there are, there are contractions that are happening. And even when Jesus gave his life, I just want to go back to, the, to Gethsemane. The Bible says that when he was praying, he began to sweat with blood. There was anguish. It was literal anguish that dripped of, of sweat became blood. And he poured out blood before he even got to the cross, before he even got to be whipped, before he even got to be whipped, uh, beaten, before he even got his beard torn out, before he was even disfigured to the point of irrecognizable 
face, you couldn't tell who he was anymore. This is what history tells us. And he did it for you and I. He took the punishment that I should have taken, that you should have taken, and he took it upon himself. And I'm going to show you because there is something. He was the firstborn, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but he was the firstborn among the dead. So this is so important of why we must be born again. It's not just about a denomination or a way that we believe things. It's in the Bible as, a, as how we become new life. How we become a new creation. How God gives us an open door to move us from death to life. Because we're walking men that are just dead until we meet Jesus Christ. Because we have no knowledge, we have no understanding of who he is until the resurrection comes to us. So he says this, and just the Lord allows pain to produce spiritual hunger. Here's what happens, right? Because he knew, the Bible says because he knew, he, he didn't care about what any of the things that were going on around him, the de- all, the, all the punishment he would take, he didn't care about any of those things. He was set on one thing, do it, completing the mission so that you and I would have life. So that all of humanity would have an open door to step into the fullness of life. And so there is power in who he is and what he's done. And it's not by, it's, it, it's by, it's the foolish thing that confounds the wise. As I was talking on, on Friday, like the whole picture of him being hung on a tree was to, to disgrace him. And through his disgrace and his beating and his, you know, mutilation, literally graphic, yes. But we, you know, if we, we just have to see what's happened so that we can see the glorious day that we celebrate today because through all that, he came back to life. He was totally reju- rejuvenated from the, the glory of the Father, raised him from the dead so that you would be raised from the dead internally first. See, the, the, the Bible tells us, right, death, death will, will come and it will be swallowed up. It's by Jesus Christ, Right? So Colossians, we, I just want you to see. So when sometimes when we, when we go through things, we don't understand that we're birth, like God wants to birth something in us, even in our struggle. And Christ is the model, right? Because of what he suffered, <laughs> i.e. suffering is sometimes part of our Christian walk. I don't like that thought, but sp- God has placed it in proportion to our understanding that the glory of God is coming to you. And sometimes we go through things, but God does these things so he can birth something in your life. And sometimes it doesn't come the way that we thought it would come, but God is truly trying to break us out of thinking that all things are are, are made just for us. Come on, he loves you, you're where his children but he's, he's done things and purposed things by the cross to cause us to walk a selfless life so that we can understand that Jesus Christ came, he died, he suffered so that I might have life and life abundant. All right? I want you to just see a couple things here. As a woman, she is in labor. So I just want you to look at a couple things in, in, in matter of, of labor, because I'll just go by our own experience, our own, <laughs> her own, but I witnessed it, okay? So with, with our first one, Victoria, she was a smaller baby than the second one, who was a big baby. But Victoria was, what, seven pounds, Seven, eight, there we go. Seven, eight. You know, Josiah was like nine, 13, something crazy, right? Almost a 10 pound, you know. Yeah, it's the lamb we're cooking today, right? My gosh, 22 inches long. I say that because the first, when, when Victoria was born, here's the thing there was a lot of struggle. A lot of struggle. Come on, long time. 
And I won't get into all the details, but I tell you, sometimes it's messy. Come on. Sometimes it's loud. Sometimes things, you know, when you're going through things, sometimes we just get loud. Sometimes, you know, things are happening. But I'm telling you that because of the firstborn, the second birth, come on, the one that came after was a lot easier, I think. Yet he was bigger. <laughs> Came out looking like a, you know, like he got beat up. But that's besides the point. Right. My point is, the first one made the way. I'm doing this for a reason. Because Jesus was the firstborn among the dead. So what happened with Jesus? Jesus made the way for you and I to come. How? Ready? We're going to read it. Colossians 1 and 15. Colossians 1 and 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn, firstborn over all creation, but that's not what I'm looking for. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and, are in a, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him. Come on, this is, this is amazing. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Come on, this is the, this is the reality of who Jesus Christ is. He is the Son of God. He's not just, he is God. <laughs> He wasn't just a man. He was God, fully God, right? And he, his, he is the head of the, ch of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. So that all things he may have preeminence, which is he's first in ranking. He is above every other thing. He's above every other one. What does that mean? That means that he came out, he came through the the the. the the um, throngs of death first. By how? By the glory of the Father. Right? That's what, the, that's what the scripture tells us, that he was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. That's what gives us newness of life. So we talked about on Friday, and I just... As we look at this, he birthed all things, right? All things consist in him. And so he is the head of the body, the church. So he went out first, broke through sin, death, sickness, all these things. Broke through it and became alive again. This is what I'm talking about, the military victory. He conquered everything. This is the other thing. He broke every bit of condemnation. Every place where you, where you feel terrible about what you've done, what everything's might you've gone through in your life, God has taken care of it. He's washed it away. He's wiped it away clean by the blood of his, by the blood of his son. And in that, he broke the power of sin and death, which means he broke out in, on that day, Easter morning, and he's alive. The Bible says in Revelation, he's alive forevermore. That means right now he is in heaven, heavenly places. He's in this room. The man, alive. 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 There was that old song we used to sing, alive, alive, alive forevermore. Come on. He is alive forevermore. And there is this, there is this thing that we have to understand. There's this truth that we must understand in our being that he came so I would, my debts, everything that I owed, he took care of. Yeah. Everything that I may have fallen short of, everything that I'm being persecuted by the enemy by. Listen, there is sin, guilt, and condemnation that the enemy tries to throw back at you and throw back at you and throw back at you. And God has set you free from those things. Yes. Completely free. Yes. Whether you know it or not, it's done. That's why he said it is finished. There's no more maybe. It is done. So therefore we walk in freedom and liberty. 
And you like, that's why when I've seen people come in and out of this place and they got born again and they, they're just like, wow, I left. And literally one, one girl said the grass was greener, like everything was new. And so never let that wear off in your life. As a matter of fact, as you're walking with Jesus, it should become more and more like your understanding and the way you see things. Like if throw the church hurt away, (laughs) come on, we got to throw it away because you know what? That's fallen stuff. And if we just have a heart that would just be like, Jesus, all I want to see is you. And yes, you will see the, the, you know, we don't want to always, we got pink roses and glasses and all these things that, you know, God wants us to see and discern things. Absolutely. But he wants you to be able to walk past the things that you're seeing in darkness, right? The, the dark things, even, even among the body that you might see. And God wants us to walk in liberty and life and be able to speak things that are just bringing life. Ready? You're going to change your language after you leave here today. That your life internally is going to be amazing. And you're going to love the Lord in a deeper way just because you came in. <laughs> Come on. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to encourage someone. Here we go again. Revelation chapter 1. Starting in verse 4. It says, grace and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. Come on. Yes. He sends peace to everyone in this place. Why? Because he's resurrected and he lives forevermore. That's just who he is. You can't change that. White House can't change that. <laughs> come on. I'm just, I'll keep it quiet. All right. I'll just keep it down. But here, here we go. And from the seven spirits who are, who are before his throne. So the Holy Spirit who is before the throne of God and from Jesus Christ. So we've got, we've got God the Father. We've got Jesus. We've got, the, we've got everybody there, right? The, the, the three, the magnificent three in one, yes. Yes. right? And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and washed us from our sins, in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he comes in the clouds and every eye will see him. This is what is going to happen when he comes back. Now you got to believe with me that the, whole, that the Lord is coming back in a, as a person. He is a person in heaven right now in the flesh, he's before the throne with the Father, and he's interceding for you and I, and, he, and as the bride comes into maturity, and the firstborn among many brethren, come on, begins to birth something in the earth through a bride, we're going to see this, he's going to come in the clouds, and every eye will see him, this is a promise, and even those who pierced him. And I'm not happy, you know, they shouldn't be happy about that. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. And I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Ready? Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Listen, the majesty of who Jesus is burst forth when he was raised from the dead. This day that we celebrate, the resurrection life, because God is bringing all of us into agreement with those things. I'll show you in Romans chapter 8. Because the Bible says that all creation is groaning. How many are created being in this room? (laughs) How many are created being over here in this room? Come on, raise your hands. And, and, And realize this. That the Lord wants us to be postured in a position to birth things in the earth. He not only wants to birth you in the earth, but God wants to use you to bring things into the earth. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that which shall be revealed in us. Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits 
for the revealing of the sons of God. That's you and I. Right? For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because of the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of the corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Promise for you that you walk in perfect liberty, that you walk broke, like corruption is broken off of your life. You know? For we know that the that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit, even ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting the adoption. And we talked about adoption a few weeks back. And you walk in the spirit of adoption because you're walking in maturity, right? The redemption of our body. And just jump to Romans 8, 26, where it says this, and I'm just going to hit a couple things. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So here's what happens. right? Jesus came as a forerunner. By his resurrection, the firstborn of the dead. And in that groan that was within him, suffering on Calvary, in Gethsemane, all the things that he was persecuted in and and his broken body were were broken into the, the birth pangs, right? These are the birth pains that Christ had which gave to us this hope in victory, right? So every one of us, here we go. We have the whole creation's groaning. The sons of God are groaning and the spirit's groaning. There are three things that are groaning, groaning in the earth. Creation, that's everything. The whole planet is groaning that Jesus Christ would come back and return. You, the bride, The church is groaning within itself that Jesus would return. I don't know. Most people aren't groaning for that. Most people are groaning for like, God, I want you to fix my situation now. And and there's there's a place for us to pray into that. Like God God cares about our, our things, our situations. But I'm telling you, there is a Maranatha cry for the return of Jesus Christ to come back and rule over every enemy, rule over the earth. He's setting up camp here, not here, Jerusalem, but here on the earth. You understand that? And he is returning. The question is when? I believe he's, it's closer than any other time. Of course, the apostles thought he was coming in their time. And, and you know, A hundred years ago, they thought he was coming in their time. We all think that he's coming in our time. And I believe this, that you, every one of us has been given a groan. That there is a, a birthing, a laboring inside where we feel, and if you don't feel birth pains today, we're gonna pray for birth pains. No, seriously. That's what I feel like we're supposed to pray for. God wants to use us in a, in a peculiar way in the earth, and that's to pray in and to come into agreement with the Holy Spirit on what he's going to do in the planet. Revelation 1, verse 17. It says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet dead. This is John. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, don't be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I'm he who lives and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of death, Hades and death. 
God wants to unlock in every one of us in this room any place where death has a grip. That means if you are dead in your spirit today, God wants to awaken that. Because there is a groan that is supposed to be natural inside of every believer. It's a groan that causes you to call forth and you come into agreement with the Holy Spirit. God, we want you. God, we need you. God, will you manifest yourself in my life? God, will you come and visit me? God, will you speak to me? There's a groan that should not be something that is abnormal, but normal in every one of us. And it came by the resurrection. Because he took, as he walked out of death and into life, I want you to just see that there was a whirlwind behind him that began to pull all of humanity in behind him. And by the Spirit, right, we don't know. When you're born again, it says the wind blows, right? The wind should draw you into the presence of the Lord, right? God's doing all things in the earth, and he's, he, he blows his presence in, and he blows his presence around us, and we don't sometimes detect what he's doing. I'm saying today is a day to come into a, a clear understanding, a clear revelation that God has been blowing on my life. And though I might have been going through things, though I might be going through things and might, be, might have had seasons of suffering, God's causing that and using it so that I walk into the newness of life. So I want to give us an opportunity today to just pray. I want us to just pray. There's one thing about the Lord I know. is our humility before him. Our, our willingness to just wait on him. And I just want to give people an opportunity Right now, we'll just, just, we'll just get before the Lord. You can stand, we can do whatever, however you want to do it. But yeah, let's just stand before the Lord together. Come on. You've been given complete victory. want us to just begin to wait. Just wait on the Lord for a minute. I'm just going to pray. But the Holy Spirit was, wants to speak to you today. and It's because of his, his life that we have life today. That we have an open door to step into that life. And so God, I, I just thank you in this room. Thank you for your, your loving kindness, Jesus. I thank you for your, your glory, Lord. I thank you for what you've done. I thank you, God, that you gave us complete freedom today. Lord, we thank you for the gospel. Jesus, we thank you for your abundant life.
prayed out of heaven, became a man, stepped onto the earth, walked in perfect union before the Father. And again, what what we see, Adam had a perfect earth, had a perfect surrounding, yet fell in sin. And then we have Jesus who came into a world of corruption brokenness and he walked perfectly without any he walked in perfect obedience to the father so he made a way for you and I Father, your glory raised Jesus from the dead. We thank you for your resurrection, Jesus. We thank you that, Lord, we get the same opportunity today. 